Fjällflugfiske efter jädda. Det tycker jag är spännande. Att få lära mig någonting av. Och jag har ju en expert här. Louise Salis som älskar jäddflugfiske. Så, so, uh, I have a lot of quest- questions for you. Yeah. Number one. Uh, what, what do you think is the difference fishing with the fly or the pikes here in the mountains compared to where you live in Austria or in the south of Sweden? Because it's quite different environment. Yeah, so here uh, at the Kaitum River, as it says, we are in a river and it's uh, super clear water. And that can be really exciting because you can actually uh, see the pike um, when you target them. And um, so it's quite shallow water where you fish, or very uh, clear water. It de- it de- it's very clear water. It depends. Yeah. It's uh, you can fish them quite shallow here. Yeah. Can find them in shallow bays, or you fish them uh, in the pike. We call it pike forest. Pike forest. Uh huh. So that is where you find them. Yes, exactly. It's not in the rapids. No, no, you no, not really. We don't target them in the rapids. No. But they, uh, we have seen some pike uh, hunting there, actually. So when we go out, what, what kind of areas do you look for? So uh, there are two things to uh, look at. Um, one is the sandy, quite shallow bays, um, where pike like to go and uh, take a rest or digest. or And uh, you can waken them up with some flies. Uh, running through their uh, home water or it's the um, the forest the pike forest which is uh, uh, natta ah. called in swedish i don't know any the, english name <laughs> that's what we call natte yeah natte yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly um, yeah okay so um, do you mainly fish for them when you see them or you know the area you look for this area. Yeah, exactly. So uh, we look for that area. So you uh, go with me yeah. uh, the next days and uh, we would uh, go with the boat and we would search for those areas. And uh, then if we're lucky, we can even sight some yeah. and cast at them. Yeah. Or um, you uh, make casts around the boat. So I would like love to see in your little fly box here. Yeah, of what course. you have the, because the flies are quite spectacular. It's not it's not like the grayling or trout flies. Uh, no, not at all. Um, maybe because you asked me like uh, what is the difference, um, for instance, uh, compared to lures, we the uh, bait we can say. Yeah. Uh, the flies are uh, quite short, so this is already uh, quite a big yeah, fly. Quite big fly. Uh, I used to, I caught one of my biggest pikes on a fly th- that is small as this. Okay, so you don't have to have really big, big, like the bobblers no. and jigs that you normally use for... Absolutely for not. Yeah. Um, what is also nice is uh, we actually only use uh, single hooks, yeah. so there are no uh, triple hooks to that we can like that we hurt so the it, fish. And it's also easier to unhook them. Exactly. And um, I see that they are quite different here. You have dark ones and colorful ones. Yeah. Uh, when do you choose what, or do you just try or? So it, it can be that on very mm, sunny days and when the water is very clear, it uh, can be that you fish for more natural colors. But um, that is either it's on or it's off. So it, 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 there's no, no real rule no. that you say, okay, today it's only uh, camouflage. Mm. And uh, on other days it's super bright colors. And when I see these flies, it's not like when we fish for, for the grayling, for example. These are not imitations of a grayling or something. Yeah, that's what this I is, like so much This about is them. more uh, Christmas. <laughs> yeah, that's what I like so much about uh, making my own flies, because you can actually uh, go bananas and choose uh, which colors you would like to use in that moment. So uh, despite from... Uh, 
fishing with dry flies where you go after the patterns. Yeah. Uh, exactly that insect. Exactly yeah. that insect that and movement. this way yeah. of, of making them because they have been very traditional yeah. um, patterns. Here you can basically do whatever you would like to. But I, I see something. You have this, uh, this little tail here. Yes. Do you need this? Is that important? Uh, I suppose I would it say it's moves not moves like that in exactly. the water. I would say it's not absolutely necessary, as this one is with uh, a feather. But yeah. we have caught a lot of uh, fish on on those tails. Yeah. And here you have uh, this is another type. Oh yeah. This is also very interesting. This is a top water fly. So it's a popper yeah. and it actually breaks the surface. Uh, so the uh, pike would, will take this fly on the surface. Like a dry fly. But, but, yeah. you, <laughs> yeah. kind of. but, you, but you pop it like this. Exactly. On the water. Yes. And the other ones are beneath water. Do they uh, sink fast or? That depends on either uh, which kind of fly you use. So there are also two different uh, uh, ways of making flies. There are the ones that are uh, on the hook. Um, we tie them on the hook and they're so-called tube flies, where we have a rig where we push it through. The tube flies, uh, they um, go rather uh, straight. Yeah. And the flies that are tied on a hook, they they actually are jigging. Ah, okay. So this means this sink a little bit faster. A little bit, but um, that is where we actually come to gear. It depends on which uh, fly line you have on your rod. Yeah. So uh, you can have a floating fly line uh, or a sinking fly line. So that makes it possible to um, fish in different depths. Yeah, but here you don't use sinking, I suppose. Or? Um, you use it sometimes. Yeah. Yes. Tomorrow? Tomorrow we will... Uh, <laughs> Uh, it depends on where we fish, yeah, so okay. it, it can be it can be quite shallow. Then mm. we only go for uh, floating lines, and when it gets like really deep and the uh, nota is yeah. is quite deep then down, change. then we actually could change to. So it's go good to have two rods, tackle. yes, one with yes. sinking and one with floating. Yes, and definitely if we go popper, we use the floating line. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, the flies, uh, what gear do we need? So, we need a rod. <laughs> um, that's a, a nine weight rod um, with a nine weight reel and uh, uh, the the fly line that fits to it. Yeah. And um, I will open this. The leader is, uh, I think, very important. Yes, exactly. So we have uh, some quite thick uh, nylon tippet material here. Um, but then there's the important part, there is a uh, um, around uh, 50 centimeter uh, pike wire, we yeah. call it. Yeah. So that the, uh, the pike have crazy sharp teeth so that they don't destroy um, uh, the line uh, or the wire. Uh, no, different, sorry. So we need this uh, pike wire so that they don't uh, destroy the tippet material and first of all we want to catch the fish and we want to land it yeah. but also not to leave the pike uh, with a yeah, hook in their mouth. Of course. And I see you have a rather thick uh, nylon leader and it's quite short. Just yes. Just a meter or so. Yeah exactly that's about the length uh, yeah. we fish it. Yeah. So it's completely different to the grailing fishing. With yes long absolutely. And 
I feel like they they are don't really um, at least up here they don't really care about the thickness of the leader or whatsoever. Mm. Uh, I've been uh, catching pike. They were actually looking at me. They were staring at the boat. So it's more like getting their hunting instinct awaken, and then they forget everything. <laughs> So, and then they smash the, the, they the can flies. They can follow the fly all the way to the boat. And Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> that is the most exciting and the nice thing about it. And how do you fish the fly? And um, how do you do the strike? Okay, so um, it would be for a beginner, uh, for uh, pike fly fishing, I would rather choose uh, like a... Ooh, Smaller fly. Yeah, a smaller fly because it's much easier to cast in yeah. the wind. And then uh, depending on um, uh, where you are and what uh, depth and which line you have on, you can retrieve it differently. So um, if I have a floating line, for instance, I can try different paces and actually go quite slow. And then um, if I... Uh, Want, and then I can also uh, cast it out and retrieve it really fast. Yeah. So I actually believe that the color of the fly doesn't play such a big role. It's actually how how the fly uh, behaves. Yeah, and so you never they, know. Sometimes they, exactly. they want it fast, exactly. sometimes it's slow. So if we are in the boat tomorrow, we will try like different colors, yeah. you and I. Yeah. But we will also try different speeds yeah. to like see, okay, what are they uh, uh, reacting to? Yeah. And, and when they take the fly, do yes. you do a strike like that with the rod? or? So as you are retrieving your line, the first thing you basically do, you do a, a firm push back. And the then, the yeah. Yeah. to hook the fish and then you lift up the rod yeah. it's 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 a fast movement it's combined yeah. but i think that's the most different compared to uh, dry fly fishing you don't strip in and then lift yeah. it off and last uh, thing what, what equipment do do we need do we need a net a plier um when fishing from a boat the net can be helpful um you can uh, also land them by hand, but what you most certainly sometimes cannot do as the pike swallow uh, the flies, uh, you will need a fairly like big plier. You don't want to go there. It's long plier. Yes, a long plier is very helpful. And you don't need a net. Normally when you fish with a, a big bobbler with triple hooks. Exactly, so the net. release is quite... Um, quite simple. E simple and easy and, and also the landing because only one head hook so you can yeah. use the gill yeah exactly you may you gill grip. yeah you use the gill grip yeah. hmm. thank you <laughs>